It's been an eventful week for Ukraine, from the ambiguous messages coming from the NATO summit to reported drone strikes on the capital city of Kyiv. I'm joined by Dr. Sean McFate, an expert in national security and senior fellow at the Atlantic Council, to break down some of these events, starting with NATO's pledge to supply more weapons to Ukraine. What began as a trickle of, we're going to give some training and some Javelin missiles and maybe some Stinger missiles, which the US has never really given away before, except for the Mujahideen in the Afghan war against the Soviets, is turning into HIMARS and cruise missiles and, you know, Patriot missiles and F-16s and M1 tanks. I mean, the U.S. has never given this stuff away to anybody. And it was all given away on the promise of Zelensky that, you know, NATO, you give us all this money and all this very sophisticated equipment and we will... um, you know, we will win decisive victory in a spring offensive of 2023. The spring came, the spring went, there was no even attack. And now it's summer and there's no decisive victory. In fact, Ukraine is flailing and one should ask, where are the tanks? Where are the tanks? And there's, you know, beneath the calm veneer, of, you know, the NATO meeting and everybody, all 31 countries banding together and back slapping Zelensky. There's a lot of concern within the alliance about this mission creep problem. Yesterday, the UK's Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace, suggested Ukraine wasn't grateful for the support, as Ukraine's President Zelensky continues to push for full NATO membership. The yes, donor fatigue uh, is definitely setting in. And again, b- beyond the headlines of the all the presidents and prime ministers uh, glad handing Zelensky, there's real questions in the alliance between the member countries themselves of how much is too much? Uh, you know, is Ukraine, you know, Ukraine is going through a burn rate of artillery like it's very done in World War I. And they have no sense of uh conservancy or how you know they're not managing the war well and they're not winning uh i mean if they're winning you could say okay fine but it's it, you know the idea that they can win a battlefield victory in donbass and somehow that equates to the russian defeat is irrational and so uh and i know uh, you uh, you know many in the ministry of in whitehall have said you know we're not amazon and i think there is this degree of um disappointment and fatigue and some anger amongst national security establishments across nato about the ukrainian performance this week also saw a number of drone attacks on ukraine's capital city kiev so war is armed politics and you can get the arm part right but fail on the politics which is what you know winning battles but losing wars looks like right and we think of the vietnam war iraq afghanistan And I think that Putin's a pretty shrewd strategist most of the time. And what he's showing is is using um, armed politics by sending drones into Kiev when NATO is having its meeting. It's showing NATO and the global media that, you know, Ukraine is is vulnerable and that Russia is not out and Russia has a vote, too. So, you know, NATO is 31 countries, but Russia, they're not obviously a member of NATO, but they have... They, what you know, NATO is going to have to react, not just pronounce. So I think it's an example of Russia showing the world that it, you know, do not count us out. This, those attacks were not to for a tactical win; they were for strategic wins. It was part of armed diplomacy. Wednesday saw Turkey back Sweden to join NATO, and Ukraine received the so-called easier route to membership, prompting the question. Is the West sleepwalking into a war? NATO can go further. I mean, who a year ago thought that the United States would be giving F-16s and M1 tanks and Patriot missile battalions? It's not just America, Germany, it's the United Kingdom, uh, cruise missiles. And I think there is, you know, the nature of war is to escalate. And there is this potential that we can sleepwalk into another 1914 situation where suddenly Russia and the West get embroiled in war, sucked into it, 
by a situation in a far off province called Ukraine, just like Sarajevo in 1914. So I think that is the risk. And of course, you know, the risk is always nuclear. And this idea that um, people will be conservative by when they pull the, the nuclear hand grenade pin. I mean, in a nuclear war, you want to go nuclear the moment you think that you have no other choice. And we don't know what that looks like in Putin's mind. So the nuclear threat is very still much on the table. And I think it's kind of receded over the past 17 months in the back of policymakers' minds, which is a dangerous situation. On the battlefield, it's been reported there's been a stalemate situation in Bakhmut and very few gains made on either side. You know, they tricked Ukraine into fighting a war of attrition in Bakhmut, in their eastern Donbass, like Verdun, like Stalingrad, a meat grinder. And, you know, who cares if one Ukrainian soldier kills 20 Russian soldiers if Russia has, you know, 500 million more in reserve? Ukraine does not have 500 million more in reserve. So, you know, you... Russia tricked Ukraine into fighting a type of warfare, a type of tactics that Ukraine cannot win in the long run. And so it's not just been a stalemate. It's been a slow creeping victory, a bloody one for Russia. And Russia has always fought this way. They don't care about human life, whether it's the czars or Stalin or Putin. This is like the Russian way of warfare. And I think what Russia really wants to do is they want to freeze the conflict and make Ukraine a landlocked country with just the Western border on NATO. And remember, one is Romania and one is Bulgaria, which is pretty sympathetic to Moscow. And they can cook Ukraine in this situation. They hope that the West has donor fatigue and NATO kind of, you know, kind of dis separates a bit and uh, Germany is interested in economic ties. So they're going to play it that way. What Ukraine, I think, should have done, I've been saying this now for six months, is rather than trying to fight a, a Stalingrad in Bakhmut uh, from December on, they should be clever and try to pit the Wagner Group against the Russian military to try to create almost a civil war in Russia under Putin's nose while he's fighting a war in Ukraine. And at least you can remove maybe one of those armies from the battlefield, which is much more effective than say, you know, artillery rounds or munition cluster, you know, bomblets. All eyes are now on the battlefield to see how this conflict develops. Simon Banks, The Sun.